So I'm just going to wait for a few people to, to join the live and then we're going to get into it. But put some comments down below if you're in uh, on the live. It'd be good to see who's in. Um, someone's requested to come live. We can't do that right now. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. Hey, Danielle. Make sure you follow. Oh, I thought it was a question. <laughs> hey. So we'll just wait for a few people to get in. Hey, Jess. Hey, Rita. So um, just in the comments while we're waiting for people to, uh, to join the room, who's open? Hey, Ian, who has opened their salons? How is it all going? Um, I know we've got and my sister, little Frenchie, Coco. Hey, <laughs> clever dog. Hey, from India. Hey. So, um, yeah, pop it in the comments down below if you have opened your salon yet or if you haven't, if you're waiting, because uh, it'll be great to uh, to see who is um, up and running and who is, is anybody nervous, because um, I know I was. I opened the salon yesterday and uh, I had nerves like my worst nerves ever worse than coming on like here or going li uh, live or anything so uh, we're all in the same boat let's support each other so uh, yeah wales ian still waiting scotland still waiting but also the guidelines be good to see what people are doing with guidelines but get your comments in below show some emojis and uh, we'll get into it in a minute we're going to be doing the uh, the 3v ed tonight and I know it's um, a colour. When I teach the course, it's a colour that uh, a lot of people um, don't understand the concept because it's going against the grain of what we do. But it's really sort. It, it's, it gives a 3D effect in, in colour, and it's something I've, I worked on for a number of years. And so around about six years, I was developing it. And in the comments, just if you were here for the Jane colour. Just, just put hands up. It'd be good to see if you were, if you were there, because the concept is quite similar. So the concept of contouring, and what I took uh, from contouring, hey, it's a very interesting colour technique. It is, and the colour technique often makes people think, um, why am I doing this? Like, why am I putting a light colour at the root underneath a dark colour? Like it's completely against the grain of what what we do as 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 artists, as hairdressers, as colorists, and the reason I come up with it is very simple. So, like the Jane color with um, with the the contour concept, where you've got the darker and the lighter. So the dark being the contour and the lighter being the highlighter. It was a case of transitioning it from the face into the hair. And I'll tell you how I, I came up with it. So coming up with the technique, it was basically looking at how girls were sort of transforming themselves overnight. So you'd see them one day and then the next day they looked completely different. And this was all down to the, the revolution of contouring. And what contouring does is it, it can slim the face, it can make it bigger, it can highlight features like the eyes, the cheekbones, the chin, or the nose, it can make it look bigger, make it look smaller. And I was super, super interested in getting to know how girls were sort of transforming their faces and making themselves look, I don't know, just like more defined. And when I really looked into it, I was looking at um, the, the technique and with every face shape, it was, it was quite similar. So when you look at round faces, square, tr um, triangle, hearts, oval, oblong, you've all got, we've all got um, a similar head shape, but there's these slight differences. They might be wider, they might be longer. And when you look at how people, girls in particular, but guys also do it now as well, um, how they contour their face, you're looking at two diamonds. So you'll look at a diamond through here, and you'll look at a diamond through here. And normally contouring is around the perimeter. And then you've got the highlighter through here and then you've got contour through here with highlighter to, to make things look bigger or smaller. And it's something that we can do really simply in hair. And it's what I'm going to show you tonight. So taking those two diamonds and placing them into the head. So the first diamond being this little diamond goes from the high point of the head. I'll show you the section in, in a second. And then the, the perimeter follows the, the planes, the natural planes of our head. And if you don't know what the planes are, 
it's just the flat points of our heads. So making it really hug the head because everyone has planes of head. It's just depending on the, the head shape being different. So I'm just going to talk you through the sectioning pattern and then we're going to go a little bit further into it. Love the explanation. Right. So if you can see this, I've already pre-done this side, but where we start with the sectioning is this top diamond through here. So you can see that. So that top diamond normally sits around here. So girls and guys can contour their, their nose, their cheekbones, and just really highlight their mouth and through here. And then when you come to the external diamond, which normally starts at the middle of the forehead, through to the ear, and then to the chin. And that's where this perimeter comes in. So a centimeter away from the hairline, we follow it to a centimeter above the ear, and then that goes to the occipital bone. And then what this does is the natural planes of the head, it gives you that, that real sort of head hugging uh, bespoke color. And the reason it's bespoke is because everyone's head shape is different. So when we're putting this, this technique and this section pattern into the hair, it is just gonna become bespoke because you're doing it on a different person. And that's the beauty of it. There's nothing like, in, um, there's nothing difficult in, in sectioning, but what you will find with this haircut, because it is quite short, you'll find little bits pop out. And I think that is the only difficult part of this sectioning pattern. But if you've got little bits popping out, you've done it right. Because when me and David developed the 3D uh, concept, so I'll tell you a little bit about that. We had to create a concept to go with Joyful. And if you haven't seen Joyful, it's just here at the back. So it's a volumizing shampoo conditioner and a volumizing styler. And it is, it's, it's unreal, to be honest. It gives you so much lift, so much lightness and plumpness that your hair will just sit naturally really airy and just basically give you a lot more, more volume in your hair. So when we had to come up with something, we had to come up with a longer haircut and more commercial colour, which was the Jane. And then what we've got here is something a little bit more technical with the cut and then something with the colour, which is a little bit against the grain. And I'm saying against the grain, it was when we were sort of developing it. But if you look at one of the biggest pop stars, I suppose, coming out this year, last year, maybe Billie Eilish, she is got hot roots everywhere. And this is what we're creating here. We're creating hot roots underneath a, a smoky root, underneath hot roots as such. And this is what will give us the 3D color. And if you've got the lighter root through here with the darker root sitting on top, you've, you're already gonna get that little bit of lift. So, how I developed it with the, the contour was when I looked at palettes, and this is what I spoke about on the Jane. When you've got contour palettes, you have uh, contour colours and you have highlighters. So I got this bowl and it's four compartments. So I can have all my colours through here and I can really bespoke it to my client. So yes, following this section pattern and this technique, but because everyone's different, you can, you can really switch it up. You can be using any colours. I'm going to be using today 6SB and 9SB really contrasting levels of depth and the reason i've done that is because i really want to show you how disconnected with color and the cut that david's cut david did we can really stretch it out but make it blend seamlessly so when we started the 3v concept we had to um we had to get our model and our model walk the, cho the, the chosen model, shall I say, walked into the room and we already had models in there who were blondes and were and thinking, right, there's not much to do there. But then we had Samina walk in. Samina walked in and she was a level five uh, DD cream already on her hair. She walked into the casting and instantly I was like, that's her. But the, the biggest issue was she was level five and I wanted to get it to a level nine. And we consulted with the team, uh, with the guys at Joyco, and we just wanted to, 
understand would I have would I be able to have her for an extra day to be able to go through the process of pre-lightening her so let's talk about the pre-lightening process what we did what from the level five we had to do a virgin application do you know what a virgin application is pop it down below if you know what a virgin application is I'm going to tell you now anyway so virgin application if you've got a little bit of natural root but you've got a lot of color and you're looking at lifting through you're not going to go right into the roots because you're going to get that real pop of blonde and lift at the root and you're going to end up mid lips and ends having to go back over it again and you're going to create bands so with a virgin application start from the mid lengths and ends and work it up let them develop and then once they've developed to around about level eight then go back in and take it into the root and it'll all lift very very um, seamlessly but then what we did we had to do two applications because we want to lift it really carefully not damaging the hair we did one application we rinsed and then we used the hair repair system the four step so really really pack it with moisture pack it with strength make sure that the cuticles were sitting lovely and flat and then we could then go in again and double process which we did and if you head to Joyco Europe's uh, YouTube page or my YouTube page uh, you can see the 3D videos so you've got the ED and the Jane and you'll see the process that we had to go through to lift it to a level nine and how beautiful it looked after the pre-lift so with the, once the pre-lift was done we then toned with a 9V and 10SB just to, just to remove that that bit of yellow that was still in the hair and it, it just neutralized it beautifully. We were left with such a clean base. You'll see in the video if you head over to YouTube. It was such a clean base that it was, I mean, it was mind blowing. Everybody was just like, oh my God. Even the model was just blown away at how good she looked blonde to begin with. And that's the main thing. Like, I, as soon as she walked in the room, I was like, she's got to be blonde. So we got a blonde. Now we're going to get into the process of what we did to creating this 3V colour. So I'll show you this side first. As you can see, here is all of the 6SB. It's refined a little bit. We've still got the veil to come over the top. But you can see how it looks super, super thick. And you've got that 6SB underneath creating that shadow, that 3D effect. And then you've got the blonde sitting over the top with the smoky root. So underneath, if you open it up, you've got this lighter root, if you can see through there. But when you bring it all together, because you've got the lightness here veiling over, if the hair moves, it just blends in seamlessly. So I'm going to show you how to do it now. Get my gloves on and then we'll get colouring. But if you've got any questions, pop it down below. And we will answer them. All the guys are in the are in the live, and they'll be able to uh, answer all the questions. I'm just trying to see if there's any as I'm putting these on. But how is everybody getting on post lockdown? Right. So let's make sure you can see. So with this section, with this pattern here, we're working with the perimeter first. And what this will be is with the section that we took, the centimeter from the hairline to a centimeter above the ear, and then the centimeter from the top of the ear to the occipital bone. This is all going to be a 9SB root and then a 6SB mid legs and ends. And this is what I'm talking about with the hot roots. And when we, we sort of teach this course, people are a little bit sort of cautious as like, oh my God, is this gonna look good? But I can assure you, it looks incredible. Right, so we're gonna start with the 9SB. Who is a Joyco Salon in the house? Pop it down below. If you're not a Joyco Salon, hello, come on board. So just making sure you can see. So through here, we're gonna be working with the 9SB. And we're going to be giving that, that hot roots through here. So we're just working it through. And to be honest, it's a hairdresser's nightmare, isn't it? Hot roots. But if you use it as a technique 
to create something different, it can blow people away. And one of the things that I've noticed, and because I've, I knew I was doing this live, and I, I've been back in the salon, I was back in the salon yesterday, a lot of nerves, but it went really, really well. One of the things I've noticed is obviously people have got really, really big roots. And a lot of them are embracing it. A lot of them are wanting something different. And with this, because we are keeping roots sort of natural and, and putting in a smoky root, it's a great technique to bespoke to a client who is maybe wanting something a little bit a little bit different or a little bit more low maintenance. I'm using the glosses because they just blend out seamlessly. And the model, Samina, I seen a picture of her, uh, I think it was like six months after, and there was literally like no regrowth. You couldn't see a thing. And that's, that's why I love to use glosses. The reason I love glosses is for that reason, because they're so, they just blend out beautifully, they, they fade away, you don't get that demarcation. So all I'm doing with the application is I'm keeping a clean brush, so just that, loading it up there, and I'm going heavy into the root, and then just flicking away. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm making less work for myself when it comes to blending. So if I can get that heavy deposit of colour in there and just flick it away, it means I haven't got to do too much blending when it comes to blending through with the 6SB. So again, loading my brush up in there and then just flicking away. Again, heavy into the root and just flicking away. So if anybody's been on the 3V course, let us know in the comments. It'd be great to hear. But hopefully when lockdown is over, We'll be bringing 3V to you again, hopefully. You're all getting a snippet of it here. And I know David has done the two haircuts already. But creating this 3D colour effect gives you that illusion of really thick hair. And popping in this lighter room. And one of the biggest things when it comes to, to colouring it like this once it's rinsed, people are looking at the back, thinking, oh my God, it looks really dark in comparison. And it does. But until you've refined it, you won't get that really real blend. Because what you want to do when you're refining, and David will have shown this, is he was just taking that little bit of weight away, just making it look softer, but still adding that bit of texture so you get the lift. And when you're taking that little bit of texture in there, it starts to open up the root which then blends with the veil of colour over the top. So let's move into the 6SB. Just making sure you can all see. Right, so now we're going to use our fingers as like a bit of like a balayage board so we can blend away. So what we're doing is, We've got our 9SB root. We've now got our just on that very tip, a bead of colour through there. Now we put our fingers underneath and we just get that saturated through there. And then as we pull away, we're using our fingers just to blend it through from the root. And the reason using a 9 and a 6 is because when it's mixing together in that blend line, you're going to be getting something like a seven, seven and a half, depending on how, how deep we're going in. And again, we just pull this away through there. And then just opening it up, making it really easy for yourself. A good tip as well, when you've got the, the, the 9SB and you are using the roots, and you just flick it out of the way, and then when you come to using the 6, all the hair is out of the way, so all you've got to do is section through, bring it back, and work that colour in there. Still using just a bead of colour on top of the brush, and just bringing that through there again, open it up, get the bead of colour through there. And what this will do is 
So when we're talking about the contour of this, you can see on the on the side which is done. So this is going to be contour. So when it comes to contour and highlighting, we're obviously using the highlighter to expand things, make things look bigger. And that's what we're trying to do with the hair. We're trying to make it look bigger. And contour makes things look closer together, closer in. And what we're using this for around this area is it could be reversed to create something opposite. But what we're trying to do here is when it comes to styling, we just want to be tapering in the neckline. We want to be making the neck look slimmer. And that's what we're doing here. If somebody has quite a small neck, like a thin neck, we could do the opposite. And we could do the darker root on top and the lighter through the ends and it will really expand. So let's work through here. Still using fingers to blend. And then just pull through. Just really cleanly keeping it there. Again, hair was out of the way. Just section through. Bringing that little bit of hair through there. And one of the things with contour, and you'd have heard me if you were here for the Jane, for the Jane colour. Let's move this over here so you can see us all. So with the Jane colour, was when we come to the contour, it's it's just about making the face shape and making it look, making it suit the client basically. And we don't want to go over the top. We don't want to, if we were to put too much of this contour in, it would make the hair look a little bit too, too flat, which is why we've only done a centimetre from the hairline to the top of the ear, because we've got this, this just this edge of, of density. Like casting a shadow. So it's like casting a shadow around there and making the hair look as if it's thicker than it actually is. Let me know if you can still see, and if you can't, let me know in the comments. So, bringing this here, we're just blending through again, working it from that root area, and just pulling through, working really neat, and just keeping it out of the way of the client's face. Through there, again, section, Getting the little bead still, just working nice and neat through here. And then the last bit here. So what this is going to be, this is going to be your hot roots area. And what the hot roots are going to give you is something a little bit different. I mean, when, when we teach this and people are a little bit like, oh, because it's on the hairline, people get a little bit scared to actually be putting hot roots right on the hairline. But once it's all um, refined, blended, it just works incredibly well. So there we go. That is done there. We're going to move up. We're then going to move on to the next section, which is the second perimeter. So to keep it nice and clean, I'm just popping this along here and then popping this just there right now we move up into this section and this section will be a little bit more uh, commercial looking because we're, we're putting a darker root in and we're blending that into a nine so we're going to put the 6sb in at the root and then we're going to blend out into the 9sb and it's exactly the same technique. We just want a little bead of colour on the root and we're going to go in heavy and then pull away. So let's get that out of the way. You can still see. Let's bring this a little bit closer so you can see. Here we go. Right, I'm going to get the 6SB. Again, a little bead of colour at the top, and then we're working into this root area. So heavy into the root, and just blending away. All the way through. 
and you can see on the pre-done piece how you've got that smoky root that just blends out into the blonde and we're still to work on the top section so the top section will then veil over it all and I'll tell you about this long piece in a minute because this is how you know if you're doing the 3D course and like I was saying about these little pieces in here if they, if they pop out and ping out you know you're doing it right with the sectioning pattern David actually has a, a diamond on the top as well but in a different position slightly further back so this is why we end up with this disconnection here but we've also got some in this top diamond so then when it comes to refining you've got all of this there was some extended pieces here which I've refined slightly so let's work through the rest of this section bead of colour heavy into the root area flicking it out we don't want to create more work for ourselves we just want to work as efficiently as possible especially in this time has anybody added extra time to their services during lockdown what's everybody's um, during lockdown post lockdown sorry it'd be great to hear and after this I'll go in to read all the comments to see what everybody is doing because it is new for us all I know the guys in Ireland have been back a week so it'd be great to hear how they're getting on and we've got uh, Wales and Scotland who are still waiting but the UK started back up on Saturday I did but there's a, a few of my friends who are starting on Tuesday and Monday so is there any nerves if there are pop it in the comments and uh, the guys will be able to offer you some support and I'll be able to answer any questions after this as well so if you pop some questions either in the DM or on the actual live I'll go through it and be able to answer any questions but any questions regarding this as well so we're going to be bringing hopefully 3v to the masses in 2021 I know we had a lot of dates booked in Ireland and the UK we've already done a lot in, in Europe and it's just a shame that that we've had this unfortunate thing that's happened but we're all looking forward to getting back at it but also we've got something which is very exciting so with Joyco what we're going to be what we're going to be teasing you with is, is some more education so with the whole lockdown thing we've seen everybody saying how much they've loved Joyco education they've absolutely loved it and I think a lot of people thought it was going to stop once lockdown had, had sort of finished and everyone was back in the salon but you can see I've been in the salon yesterday I'm in the salon tomorrow and I'm here giving you education right now so this is something that we're working on with Joyco so make sure you head over to Joyco's, joycoeurope.com we've got an education bit on the website there also sign up and subscribe to the YouTube channels because there's going to be a lot of stuff happening very soon so that's that section done we're doing this section now so this is the second part let's pull it out so you can see the dark roots through there again this is the 6SB a bead of colour heavy into the root and then we're just pulling away just to create that, that blend automatically through there so just make sure you can see let's pop it down a little bit more Is there any, if there's any questions, um, I'll do a little Q&A at the end of this. Uh, and again, if there's any questions, just pop them in the DM and we'll answer them after. But can you all see how this is going to add that depth in there? Because if we're working a, a, a dark colour on top of a light colour, you're all, already going to get... That, that sort of 3D effect because we've got the lightness sitting there which is already expanding but then we're sort of closing it in with the, the root shadow so it's going to act it's going to act as a 3D colour because where you've got the darker colour and the lighter colour underneath it's going to look very 3D so it's going to look like there's more hair than there, than there actually is and this is perfect for clients with really fine density hair But precision when it comes to applying, because we're working with such um, contrasting depths, not tones, depths. So we're working with SB all the way through, just to give it a really nice smoky, um, 
thick looking head of hair. Now you could do it with coppers, you could do it with reds, you could do it with brunettes. And somebody said to me, well, what could they do it with a, a level seven and a level eight? You could, I've done it, I've done it as well, but there's just not enough difference in the depth to give you that real wow factor, to make it look thick and dense. If someone was a natural level eight, I'd probably go in with a level five. If they didn't want to go that dark, then maybe look at changing the tone. So when we talk about tones, if we look at, look at ashier and cooler tones, we know they look darker. And they look darker because they're flatter. So when it comes to that, if somebody didn't want to go as dark as a level five, if they were a level eight, let's put on the mid lengths and ends, maybe an NG, which is going to make it pop a little bit. And then at the, at the root, we could go in with maybe like a six NA, and that flatness in the NA will just make it look that little bit denser. Because if we're looking where we're going to be putting the lighter colour, so say it was an 8NG, and this was the 8NG, we've got the, the, the veil over the top, which is going to make it all blend in anyway. And then you can do it with reds, you could do it with violets. I mean, doing a 3VV root, if we're looking at permanence, or a 3V in Demi, or a 7V. We could do a 7V root, and then on the mid and ends, because it's already pre-lightened, we could then go in with an intensity and make those ends real. We could go like a pastel intensity on the ends and a real uh, deep 7V root, 3VV root. I think it look great. So here's the last of my dark of the 6SB, and you can see how I'm just going in there. So again, just a bead of colour on the top of that brush. You go in, deep, and then just flick away. And you can already see it processing. And a story about this when it was processing. So the model, Samina, so she was she was a level five when we when we met, and I said, I'm gonna turn you blonde. And when I turned her blonde to the 9V 10SB pre-toned colour, she absolutely loved it. And when I started putting the 6SB on, as you can see, it's developing, and in the video on YouTube, it looks jet black when it was developing and she got really, really worried and she was like, oh, am I not being blonde anymore? And I was like, yeah, 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 don't worry, don't worry, I'm on camera, Sunina. But um, yeah, she was like, I'm not being blonde anymore. I said, yeah. And you can see in the end result on the video, it just looks unbelievable. So with this section here, I'm on the, 10, uh, the 9SB now. And again, I'm using my hand to rest. I'm taking it up into here and I'm just using these fingers just to blend through. And we're just pulling that through there. 9SB, minutes and ends. And then just blending that through. Use the brush as well, just to blend through, get the saturation on there. I'm all about the saturation. If you watch the Jane live, I'm all about the saturation. So get your fingers in there and just blend that out. Nice and neat. Still on the 9SB through here, fingers in and just blending through with that 6SB root. Make sure you've got the saturation, rest it over the foil. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it from the side here and just work through. And you can see this disconnected piece. Now I said about the two diamonds that we had. So David has a diamond in the haircut which is set slightly further back than me. So when I put my first section in, my first diamond, I use the high point of the head. So I rest my comb on, find the high point, I then draw two inches around that to create that top diamond. You can do it by an inch, you can do it by three inches, depending on how big you want the veil to be. But I went for two inches just because when I wanted it to veil, I wanted it to be quite a bit. Because the haircut's short and there's going to be quite a bit, uh, quite a bit of darkness underneath, I wanted there to be enough blonde hair so the client still felt blonde or the model. But if we're doing this in salon, that's something you really want to consult. This technique can be used on absolutely anybody. You can do it on long hair. So with the Jane haircuts, if you watch the live of the Jane, I actually did these colours on the longer hair. 
and I think, yeah, I have. So on my YouTube channel, Paul Watts Hair, little plug, go and subscribe. Um, subscribe to Joyco as well, make sure you're there. But I've got the, the behind the scenes of how we prepare for a live. Uh, and I've done one for this as well, so that'll be going on YouTube, I think, next Sunday. But what it is, when you do this, people often think, because it's short hair and you've got all that texture, you can hide it. But even with long hair, if you go back and watch the video, you can see how beautiful it looks and how blended it looks. So again, we're just working this through, blending with our fingers. Can you all see okay? And then we're just keeping it nice and neat through here. But yeah, when it comes to trying this technique and you've done the haircuts that David's done and you you end up with these pieces here, don't worry, those pieces, like the little pieces in the nape, just mean that you've done it properly. You've followed it perfectly. Not that you've done it properly, because you could be doing your own style. So let's just finish up with this section at the back here. We're just blending through. And then we're going to work onto the top section. So we're getting that in, and all I'm doing is just blending with my fingers through there, taking it out of the way there so you can still see just trying to read some comments what's that one about the high lifts we don't recommend to use XLA to, to tone yeah so what would be really cool and I've also tried it are the quick toners you do in this technique so if you've already pre-lifted and it's just a case of adding enough clear. So if somebody wants ratios, I can say ratios after this. But adding enough clear, because we're working from underneath to the top, if we are dividing that by the amount of, by the amount of time we're going to get to the top by adding the correct amount of clear, once you get to the top, five minutes, rinse off, and you'll have something really seamless. Right, so I've just finished this. And this was the 9SB on the ends and the 6SB on the root. You can see it all developing really nicely there. So you've got that real smoky root area going into the 9SB. Last section is the top section. Now this is just gonna veil over it all. So if we just go back and see what we were looking at when it's done, you can see you've got all this root shadow through here. We've got the blonde, which is the blend out from the 6SB to the 9SB. You've got the underneath contour colour, so look at how strong her jawline, her neckline looks, around her eyes, how strong that all looks. Let's get her fringe looking better. Put a little bit there. So it looks all very strong. This will then veil over it all, blending it all, and making it look really, really seamless. So what we do Is we just section through I'm just going to throw it over to this side because that side is already done so it's going to work through the roots let me know if you can see properly and my hands aren't in the way I will check so just working through this diamond through the top now open up those roots throwing it back through there Tell you what would be easier. Let me get doing this trolley round. So you can see this piece through here. There you go. So again, this is 9SB on the roots. Working through. And we haven't got to be super precise with working up the hair with this because 9 SBs will be taken from root to tip. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to be altering this through here. So when you're putting the colour in, you just want it to be sitting over the top. So let's get this piece, last piece. There we go. So that's the roots done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have it sitting with the rest of the hair. 
So just blend that through. It's all the same colour. This is just going to blend it all together. So when you're thinking of makeup, and you're thinking, right, you're putting the contour on, you're putting the highlighter on, and then you've got a blender. So a beauty blender, a brush, anything like that. Think of this section as your blender, as your highlighter. But you could do it the opposite way. So if somebody had a long, long head, a long face shape, if we did this dark, what do you think it would do? So what it would do is if this was veiling over and it was dark, it'd be making the head look smaller because you've got that, that deep colour on top making it look smaller. Like when you put a full fringe in on dark hair, it makes their face look really, really, it looks, it makes it look a lot smaller. So we're just working this through here. Last section, 9SB, through there. Just pick it all up, make sure we've got all the saturation we need. If the ends dry out, you'll see, and I'll show you with the disconnection that we had. So I was talking about the disconnection of that back section through here, where we've got this shorter through here disconnection. You've got this length here, but then when you come in here, you've got these shorter pieces. And they're the pieces that sit with that. So when you come to section this colour off, don't think, oh, I've got a little bit there that needs to go in the front, or I've got these long pieces there, they need to come up into it. The reason we, we developed it was because what we want to do, I'm not squeezing that colour, I'm just letting it sit. So when it, when it comes to refining, we've got something to play with here to really make the roots look deeper and blend in with this. And these shorter pieces through here, because we've got the darker root there, what they will do, they will sit over that darker root and then blend that. So I'm just going to let that sit there. Now so I've got about 15 minutes left. That is the colour done. I'll just refresh. So section pattern we started with called the double diamond. I don't think I mentioned that. So the double diamond, easy to remember, it's two diamonds. One diamond, high point of the head, and then you come away two inches from there to the front, two inches there, and then two inches to the back. So you create that diamond on top of the head. You then come a centimetre away from the hairline. You draw that to a centimetre above the ear, which creates a second diamond. You then, a centimetre above the ear there, you drop it down to the occipital bone, and that gives you your second diamond. And then what that leaves you with, it leaves open the perimeter for you then to get your lighter root and your darker ends, and then you start working up into the double diamond section pattern. And get creative as you like. Let me get the, the stool, and we'll have a, I'll see what any questions there are. So sectioning pattern, the, two, the double diamond, when it came to applying, using our fingers to blend and take the colour through, we've got the darker colour on the mid lengths and ends underneath, we've got the lighter root, the hot roots, if you think of it as that, the hot roots, and then when you move up into the mid lengths and ends, you've got the, the darker root into the lighter ends, which is a little bit more commercial, but it will give you that, that blend factor. But if you were to swap it around, let's bring her in. If somebody had a really small face and you want to really open it up, this could all be light and then this could be dark. The, the roots here could be light and then this could be dark on top. So then what that would do is really open up her face but make it look a lot stronger and a lot thicker. With doing that, you might not want to do uh, a real disconnected in, in levels or in, in, yeah, in depth. You'd probably want to do it, say, three. Or, or two to get that sort of softer look but it works if you were to just want to open up through here using that lighter colour through there so it'd be a darker root through here into a lighter fruit around the face a bit more commercial and then you'd go the lighter root through here into the darker roots to give it a much 
thicker looking middle section. And then to be honest, you could do that dark on top if you want to make it look smaller, but we'd, maybe we'd want to make it look bigger. So we'd, we could do that blonde on top as a veil. So let's look how to use this technique on darker hair like level three and four. Good question, great question. So hair like level three and four, it depends on the end result you want to get. So if you want to still create a lot of volume, if they've got finer hair in a level three or four, then you could do a level three, keep it on the root, level three root, and then either balayage, pre-lighten, uh, foil, baby light, into the sections that we need to lift. So if you were looking at that section, uh, that, that level of hair, you could be doing the perimeter, you could do maybe, you could, bal you could um, baby light into the root, and then whatever was left out, you could do dark, and then working up into the next diamonds, the, the big diamonds, you could then do leave the roots as they are and maybe freehand the ends in. And then on top, depending on what level you're going to go, you could then have, have that balayaged all the way to the, to the root or you could have it veiling over natural and that would be much, much lower maintenance. Uh, love this colour pool, it looks great. Oh, cool, thank you. Um, hey, Jill. So let's just have a look, see what any, if there's, oh, yeah. If there's any questions, Wendy, just pop them in if you wrote them down and, and uh, I'll answer them. Who wants to see more education for Paul? So yeah, there'll be, there'll be loads of education coming. I think that's what the guys are, are hinting at and what I hinted at, we're gonna be bringing you loads of education. I know that there's two artists already confirmed for maybe late this month, early August, so. Um, so it might be an option, she bleached blonde, oh okay. Let's have a look. It's great to see She is from India. Oh, okay. So you want to, if you want to keep it as natural as possible, then baby light, but then look at um, complementing tones and depths to maybe make the transition blended a bit more. Because with being that dark, what you've got to think of is regrowth. So if you were to keep the veil on top and possibly the perimeter natural, but then just to give that 3D effect, maybe put some baby lights in around the hairline, that would give you the illusion that there's more hair than there is once the veil sits over the top. Um, cool, how long have we got left? About 10 minutes. So yeah, if there's no more questions, this is it. I will post it after the uh, result. But you can see there's no lines. Because a lot of people get a little bit freaked out when you're putting a lighter root under there and darker ends. But if you pull it away, you can see there's no heavy lines at all through there. It just all blends. And once it's all refined, so if you go back and, and look at the 3D videos that me and David did, uh, he will show you how to refine the haircut if you didn't catch his live. So, yeah, I won't tell you how to do it. Go and watch his video. Because uh, once he's refining it, it just all blends together. And that's one of the, one of the things. When we taught, taught the 3D course, especially with this colour, if you were covering grey more than 50%, what would you recommend? Great question, Jill. I'll answer that in a second. So, um, with the refining process, because you've got the disconnection in depths, what you want to do is because the, the you've got the hot roots, the blonde roots underneath with the darker ends, you've got the darker roots sitting with the lighter ends, as soon as you start to really refine that out and start to add that little bit of texture, the two sections start to blend and merge together. And that's where it really starts to come alive. And on the course, it was like a light bulb moment for a lot of people. They were like, I can't really see it. When they were putting the color on, it was like, Okay, it's just basically a full head colour, but there's a lot of there's a lot there's a story to it. And I think that's what clients like. I think clients love the fact that there is there's a there's a purpose to it. And talking about contour, when I was looking into hair contouring, a lot of people do it. I know a lot of people do it, but there's no real um, story to it. And my story is that you need the two, like normal, normally people just talk about the two contrasting colours, like 
we're putting in dark because it's contour and then we're going to highlight because it's a highlight but when you look at the actual way that girls and guys do their contour makeup there's there's a technique to it there's a way of doing it and there's a there's a precision and an art to it makeup artists you look at makeup artists contour it's unbelievable go on youtube have a look and then transitioning that into the hair, that's where you start to pick out your story and you start to pick out your techniques and start to really look at different industries for inspiration. But your story, Jill, uh, your story, your question, Jill, sorry. Uh, if there was more than 50% grey, what would you recommend? So you're going to get dimension anyway. So what I would do, if it was, are you saying like all over? Let's talk about all over and then let's talk about um, zones. So if they were more than 50% grey all over, then you could you could use, I would probably still go in with, depending on if they want coverage. If they want coverage, then we're looking at permanent. But then what we can do is we could potentially look at a permanent root, and then we could do the gloss uh, liquid mid lengths and ends to create that seamless uh, blend. Or you could then go in, like with a question from India, where we could be maybe baby lighting a little bit more to add a little bit more texture and dimension in there. So when the regrowth grows through, you'll have the baby lights which mimic the grey coming through. Uh, is the live on YouTube? Um, I'm going to do a video on YouTube, including this, yet yeah, on Paul Watts Hair YouTube channel. Um, I'll have the video. If Joyco wants it, they can have it. So yeah, I've already done a load of filming today and then this will all go on it. With the grey coverage, if we're talking about where they've got um, all over 50% grey, I would potentially, they would probably be wanting coverage. Or if they're looking, that client looking to grow out, then you could just go with glosses. I mean, I do a lot of, of grey clients with just glosses because low maintenance, blend, dimension, shine, you get it all. And then when it starts to grow out, then you don't have that really hard regrowth. But if we're talking about zonal, if they are a client who has already had grey coverage colours through and they're 50% they're grey coming through, I would go in with, I would do this section pattern, my two diamonds. Uh, through the underneath, I would baby light up to the root. And then when I come to tone in basin, I would then tone the root lighter and I would do the mid lengths and ends darker and I would do that all the way through. So then on the middle section, I could then baby light and then do the darker route and then tone out light. So basically it would be a new, a different technique in ap applying foils. You'd, you'd be going within the, the, the sectioning pattern, but then you would be doing a lot more of the blending at the basin. Cool. Thanks, Jill. Hey, Katrina. Um, but we have just over five minutes to go. So any other questions, throw them at me. Um, how is yeah? How is everybody feeling with all the lockdown stuff? I haven't seen any anything, but um, it's all good. Speaking to all, everybody all over the world, everybody is getting through it. It's different, but everybody's everybody's doing it. And I'm glad everybody's joining in with education. There's been loads of education during lockdown, and I think that's going to be one of the things that people miss. But I also know that Joyco are going to carry on doing it. So we're going to be bringing you loads of education. Paul, just catching and can't wait. Hope your barbecue was good. Mm. We love the decoration in the salon. Thanks. The plants, the Joyco, the, the, the uh, Joyful. Hey, David. How's, how's the, uh, how's the easy, David? I'll show it all after. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, I will finish this off. I will then get it styled, refined, uh, and then just pop a picture up after. So if there's no more questions, I will finish it there. I was trying to watch my res restaurant. That's what I do watching football, mate. Um, yeah, I've, I've filmed a behind the scenes, so that will go up on my YouTube channel on Sunday. This will all be on it as well. So, uh, hey, Marilyn, hope you're well. Um, and yeah, if you want any more education, let the guys at Joyco know because we will bring you whatever you want to know. And also, in the comments down below, um, just put what you want me from a birthday party. Oh, oh that's your party. Um, 
yeah, what education you want to know, pop it down below in the comments now. Uh, or on the post, you can also comment on the post what education you want to see from any of the artists. So we've got all the team who want to come on board, who want to come online and show you loads of their stuff. Thank you, Portugal. Thank you, everybody. I will put the video up on Sunday. This will go on Joico Europe for 24 hours. I think it will go on their grid as well now. I think, Joico, uh, I think Instagram have changed some bits. But thank you, everybody. How to decide on the right hair colour for you. For me, just wear a hat. Um, consultation. Consultation is key. So when you're looking for the right colour for you, um, and if you're looking for a new technique, then if you're not a hairdresser, talk to your hairdresser, get a really good in-depth consultation. If you are a hairdresser, then look at eye colour, skin tone, look at face shape, whatever you want to uh, really sort of make pop or you want to draw in then that's a really great way to look for a hair color that will really suit you. And one of the things that I wanted to say just before we go is that we all do it automatically. So I'm not trying to make you do anything different. I'm just trying to make you understand, just explain it more to your clients. A client will walk in and you'll be like, right, medium density hair, level three, um, face shape is oblong, eye color is this when we, and we all do it already, but let's talk to our clients and let them know that we know what we're doing. Makeup artists do it, they talk about all their makeup. Let's start telling our clients what we know and what's gonna make their life easier and recommending aftercare as well. That will help with consultation. Cool, Joyka has a great consultation kit. They do, it's over the back there. The consultation kit's amazing. Uh, I've never seen it with any other brand. So ask the guys on here uh, or ask your distributor um, and then they'll be able to, to point you in the right direction. But thank you everybody. I will get off now. I won't be doing a dance this time. Thank you everybody. See you later. I'll save this and it'll go on the grid and it'll go on the story for 24 hours. Thank you.